show us your tips. Back for uh, a preview of two big cards of spring racing. Beaver's just knocked off his Vegemite toast. He's ready to go this morning uh, with all the winners. What's happening, mate? Uh, eating Vegemite toast, apparently. <laughs> okay. Um, and having the coffee, but uh, now mate, ready to go uh, for the weekend. Uh, some exciting races, some exciting horses. Uh, even more are being produced as we get deeper into the carnival. And uh, hopefully we've got a few winners for the punters out there. Some good cards and mm. good racing and um, some really good chances. I'm, I'm feeling quite confident about it tomorrow. Yeah, to Flemington I am. Oh, Roundwick could be, and we're going to get to that second of off today. I feel like it's a bit of a changing of the guard day. I think some of these old sages, uh, well, we've got a couple retired already. There might be a few more on the way out Roundwick tomorrow, but we'll get your thoughts on that later. And we'll kick off at Flemington, where the uh, Group One on the of the day takes place in Macaiba Diva Stakes. Perhaps uh, a disappointing field there, but hundred uh, percent, yeah. The, whether that's sabotage from the Million Dollar Race in Sydney, I don't know, but probably. But let's kick off up the straight though. We're Flemington. We've got good weather, a good track, the rail true. So game on here. Uh, looking forward to it. It's a benchmark seventy eight kicking us off over the eleven hundred meters. How are you going to start the day? Yeah, it's a good little race to start the day here. Really wide open affair, I, I, I find, and uh, plenty of value. I'm going to go for number two, cause for concern. Um, I'm willing to, to forgive last start um, when things didn't really go its way, and it was only a couple of lengths behind. Uh, it's our time, who is flying at the moment. Um, it has had one start um, at this track and distance and has won. Um, I feel like it can run well here. It likes to sting out of the ground, and I think it gets the right run here to figure in the finish. Yeah, on top for me too. We're in step here. This is a this is a nice horse. It's better than better than seventy eight grade. And in that, this is coming back from the Ori Star. That was in the quicksand on the inside there, uh, and was pretty That's good right. run. It wasn't far off from at all. Uh, so the fact we're getting each way price in this race from a middle gate excites me. Uh, it's how I'm starting a day two. If I'm naming a danger, I think Skidder Marink is a horse that. Has put a couple of nice runs together, has wintered up in Queensland uh, and trialled again since um, alongside Dubai Pole. It actually came out and won the other day. So we can I can play around with both of them and start the day with a winner, I think. The second is a 2,500-metre open handicap where um, – there's a long tail on this race, and I'm sticking with his top two. Um, interpretation, go time now. Two really good runs from the long spell. Now third up, out to the distance where it would want to be competitive to be heading to a Caulfield Cup. Uh, Zara on from a swooper's gate. It uh, is on top for me from Serpentine, who came back down and kicked off in that uh, odd race in Sydney. But ran well, is pretty much the end leader I can find in this race, uh, and is going to be fighting at the finish. I Around the at the prices, I'm playing with both of them. Obvious respect to Shea, who you, I'm assuming you might talk about in a minute, but I think that comes through some of those very average winter staying fields. Uh, and we, I just want to see it get to the next level, first of all. Uh, but uh, you tell us what your thoughts are. No, I'm playing Shea. I've got an opinion of this horse, um, and I think it's well weighted here. It's got the 53 kilos, so it gets the the four to six kilo pull in the weights here. Really like the way it let down last start. I know you, you are right. It, it steps up in grade here against what was in a unit potentially a subpar field. Um, but I, I really like the way that it sprinted there. Um, the, the two that you mentioned are the obvious dangers. Serpentine was good last start, but um, I think sometimes I just worried it's a bit one paced. And again, not quite sure about that, that uh, line of form. Um, as well, and some of the form that it had previously, where it sort of come back after uh, missing uh, for a period of time, was in Brisbane. So, um, and interpretation, obviously, away on the way up. Um, Shehar on top for me in front of interpretation. Cool. The third is the Sofatel, the first of the black type races, which is headlined by one of the top Queensland horses who's come down here. How does it line up to this Melbourne form? Yeah, it's a good race, this, isn't it? Mm. Um, really mixed. You've got the Brizzy, the Sydney, and the the Melbourne form, and some some horses that are going quite well. Look, I'm going to stick with Antino purely because I thought it was 
like it was amazing up in uh, Brisbane. Um, the weight worries me a little bit, the 59 and a half, giving Deb Nathan Jack and Kalino five kilos. That That's probably my biggest concern. Um, I think it's the best horse uh, for a 1400 metre race, uh, but just the weight, probably a little bit skinny, but the one draw will suit, which means it can just sit in behind the pace there um, and get that cosy run. Um, detonated Jack was good first up, uh, but again, probably wanting longer than his second up. And um, yeah, Kalino is always consistent, but I'm banking here on this Antino. They're bringing it to Melbourne because they've got a big opinion of it. And um, that's how I'm going to go. And you can t- it did beat up Munamek last time out, who you can tie into you know, fine form lines through Melbourne uh, quite easily. It's... And, and in this type of race as well, Minimec would be considered a chance. Exactly. Like, you know, it's as good a horse, if not better, than uh, Kalina, for example. I can see it leading here. I think it just goes straight to the front and don't catch it. Who else? There's no, Everything else is a back marker. Uh, yep. It probably leads and Kalino sits second and they probably finish one too. Um, because they go so slow in Melbourne as well, a lot of these Queensland horses have success when they come down. We go through the... Um, Scolopini. Scolopini is just one horse because it goes quicker than it. Like just cruises around at a quicker speed. Yep. Um, your sprinter that I've just forgotten its name, Easy Old Mate, James, Easy James, James, something like that. Uncommon James. That one. Um, and you can reel them off. They've come down and had success every carnival, uh, coming back to buffering and those sort of horses. But I think it's a cosy run here. I think it wins and goes on to better things. Probably a live chance. Once we get to – interesting where they go, to be honest, whether it head goes straight to somewhere like a the mile race in a few weeks or something else. But uh, very interesting to see it kick off. Good to see James Orman in town as well, uh, riding well up in Queensland. At the price, I'm going to make King Magnus a danger. I had Kalino's second pick, but I think King Magnus is a silly price at 18 bucks. It's a better horse than most of these. And as I said, Kalino might get the cosy run. Wasn't bad last time. Had to chase from a long way out. Uh, and he's the obvious other danger. The Poseidon Stakes. I'm feeling pretty good about Antino now, but after you, you know, you've given me a boost of confidence there. I was, I was pretty confident before, but um, maybe I'm a bit in love because I right. there isn't any pace. I, I love that win it had where it um just went to the front up in Queensland. Like the, it's just me a too. dynamic horse. So, um, I yeah, I, I'm <laughs> I might revise and make it my best of the day more than this. But anyway, let's get to the, the Poseidon Stakes, where we get these three year olds resuming up the straight over the 1100 meters. I'm not as confident here, but I am putting Kings here. But on top, I'm a bit completely off the Snowden stable. Um, so this is going to be maybe one and done. If it goes no good here, it might get life. But it did try well against Nature Strip and uh, some good horses. Um, who I know Nature Strip's now retired, but does trial up well. And uh, looked pretty cosy against them. I think it gets a, a comfortable run here for Shin uh, and is going to be a real live chance from uh, Archo Nacho, who's a horse I've always had a um, opinion of. Nelly should be unbeaten. Mr. Start and Nelly caught exploring last time. That form ties into a lot of these. Uh, and I'll have a watch on Kadinsky abstract down the bottom there. Got out of its ground and maybe um, the straight will suit where they can waddle up the straight and it can unleash the sprint we saw from it on debut. Uh, just noticed it. Pivot Cities, I thought it was second favourite. But anyway, um, yeah, 3, 10, 11 for me, Beaver. Yourself? Yeah, I'm going, I am unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this horse is, uh, this is a, a perfect setup for it. Um, it was really good uh, in its first preparation, winning its first two race starts, and then uh, first up after a break, um, hit the line really strongly, and come home from last uh, to finish a neck behind cylinder, um, which cylinder has come out and uh, gone mm. on to better things, and is is a high quality horse. I, I thought that was really good. I think this is a horse on the way up, and I think five dollars is uh, um, and get money back for a place is very good. Um, it's on my topper and uh, hard to beat. Beautiful fourteen hundred meter Exford's Plate, another listed race for the three year olds, is up next, and. <clears throat> An easy bet here with Legacies. That was a, a, a good return against a top horse last time out. And it's now coming back to what I would call a midweek race. Uh, it's going to yeah. get a lovely run from Jamie Carr. It's as long, hopefully won one, but probably outside lead. 
knowing her. Uh, and I think it's going to be very hard to beat. Uh, plenty of upside for it. I'm going to make the main danger, Mojave Desert, who gets baked shin. Probably should have won resuming. Straight to 1,400 metres. And we know with Blake, it's going to be much closer than it was last start. Camping right on leaders back, I hope. And, uh, next best. There's a lot of other little bits and pieces, but uh, they're the main two for me. What have you made of this? Yeah, pretty hard to go past Legacies after um, its first up run. Uh, was very good first up after a spell with some great form previously. Gate 7 looks ideal. Um, it should get into the right spot here. And, yeah, I think, you know, some of these um, are just horses. So I've got it on top. I thought the main danger might be a horse around 20s in Gangitano. Now it's broken through. Uh, I think it can run well. That was a good good win to get Get it, break its maiden status. Um, could get the running line here and maybe be a good chaser. I may, for my insanity, have something on uh, double glaze the place at 20s there as well. But anyway, the six is the capped on Teebs, 1100 meter listed race for the three old fillies. Let's get some black type and all these. Uh, and uh, we see another good horse here, Beaver. Come, uh, what are you thinking? Yeah, it's a tricky, it's a, an interesting race, isn't it? Um, just what's hard to know here is where's going to be the best part of the um, track. Yeah, going. I'm, I'm yeah, hoping. So, I'm know, hoping got... this track is a genuine good, uh, and it's fairly even to be honest. But yeah, yeah probably. That's what I was, I was just a bit un. Yeah, I was just a bit unsure of how it was going to play, whether it was going to suit the outside or the inside. Um, so I was a bit. I was a bit. Uh, Strung up there, but I am going to go on the basis that it'll be it'll be pretty fair. And if it is fair, I think Skirt the Law um, is probably going to be the hardest to beat. Um, that was an outstanding first up run behind Charmstone, who uh, has since come out and won. And prior to that, its form up in Brizzy was outstanding. Again, another one of those Brisbane horses that looks like it can come here and be super hard to beat. And I just struggled to find too many dangers. That was the problem. I kind of went looking and I got, you know, went through the form with um, Fine Tooth came here and I sort of went, oh, I'm just trying to find where the dangers are. A couple of that I did come up with, I thought Stewart City, um, if it is favouring the inside, I think it can run really well. Um, it's a horse with plenty of potential. So I'd certainly be saving on it. And one down at um, even better odds is number 20, Shiva. Uh, about $35 at the moment uh, might get better. I think it can run well and give you a bit of a sight. Um, so there were sort of ones that I'd be looking to save on. I, I, I agree. Skirt Law's on top. I think that was a nice return. The form's been franked. Out of that same race, though, it's all and over was backed into Nelly favourite from about 10 bucks into $4 in that race. It was stuck right to the inside where the inside was complete quicksand. Uh, and it's now 23 bucks. Uh, I'm going to have something on it again. Uh and see what we can come up with there. Inside, uh, same fame fear, gate three. We'll see how the track's playing by now. Uh, but it is the danger for me. And Cigar Flick coming down, was ridden a little bit upside down in Sydney last time out. Uh, and I know I haven't had a great opinion of the of the of that form. But it's now again 20s. I'll have, a, I'll have some explore in it because Waller tends to pull the right rein with these horses a lot. The seventh is the mile. Mackay Bediva Stakes, wait for age, uh, group one. And uh, is there a lot to talk about here? I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, just my horse that I've been backing for some time now looks like it just wins again. Um, looks to be too good for these. Um, gets the gate two, uh, gets the right sit here. It's only a small field. Some of these horses can't win because they're just stayers and they're just not going to have the, the the ability. So there's only three or four horses that are actually even a chance of winning here. You're, the only danger is probably that alligator blood leads and can just go so slow that um, it can sprint and right side can't get past it. But uh, I think it'll probably sit on its back anyway and it might be just a, two, just well, a I th little bit too good. I think Ollie stuffed up that lead up because they went so slow. He allowed it to sprint past it. Alligator blood needs to be rolling. Uh, there's two hopes. If if he pulls it off, maybe he can. And it did beat Saki when he rolled a bit too. Yeah, it, like it's yeah the one at Sandown. Yeah, he, he needs to yeah. get going. 
Um, and the fear is a small field you won't. If It's pretty simple. If uh, if he gets going and makes Brightside drawn out, he's a chance. If he's not, uh, Mr. Brightside will win again. And if they go slow, Craig Williams will park right in his back. He's, you know, I'd see only two ways I can see this race unfolding unless Ossipenko. A dollar, a dollar 90. Um, wasn't it shorter in the. I just think it's good. Wasn't it shorter last two weeks back? Yeah, two weeks back when it beat Pinstriped, it was a dollar eighty. Yeah. Oh, I think it got into. Um, yeah, just interesting. Um, anyway, I, I would not talk you out of going again because, uh, yeah, unless Osipenko really takes off it as well, maybe try to set it up for Princess Grace, but uh, I can only see the top two being chances here. Yep, same thing. The eighth is the Let's Elope Stakes, Group 2, and we see another Spruik horse, uh, Amelia's Drill, kicking off in Melbourne. Uh, are there any dangers to her? Well, there's a couple of dangers, but uh, I think it uh, should be winning. Um, looks to be a ho- promising horse. I uh, love the way and what it's done in uh, WA. I was waiting for when we would see it in Melbourne, and... Here it is. I think this is a good um, race to kick off in. Again, another one where you sort of go through the, the field and look for a danger, and um, it's it's pretty hard to find one. Um, I thought uh, I thought a horse like um, Foxy Frieda, Frieda might be a horse that could uh, uh, chase hard and and produce a good run. Um, I thought See You in Heaven was a bit disappointing last start. Um, it box seated and um, Sione went past it. Um, it Sione's just a horse and it's in good form. So that was that, that's a bit bit of a concern for me. Maybe see you in heaven can improve, but uh, what's like casters stepping up in grade here? Um, yeah, I can't see him beating Amelia's jewel. The only danger is the 14 gate, but that probably helps because it's going to perfect produce. You're just uh, – Damien Lane will get got? it to the outside. Yeah. If this horse has what we think it has under the bonnet, she'll just get the outside at the top of the straight and blow this field away. Uh, I am tempted to throw – if to have a wider quaddy and throw Cast, Foxy Frieda, Road to Arataki and Sparkle in. We'll see. I'm travelling on the day. But this um, – and when we get to your quaddy, you might actually have to pay the tab back if, um, if this quaddy wins the way we're going. But um, now nah, it's on top, clear on top. Not going to spend any more time on the race. Uh, the Bobby Lewis quality is up next. Another group race up the straight, 1,200 metres. And again, clear on top here is Benedetta. Um, nice horse has come back in great style. That was a proper win last time. I just sat three wide and did it as it liked against a good horse. Uh, these are listed quality horses, and I think she's a group one horse. Uh, she'll win this. Uh, if I'm going to – the only other no, number I'll throw into said um, Quaddy will be King of Sparta because we know on its day it can produce that um, that burst and uh, knock us all out. But that's it for the race for me. Nice horse here. Yeah, excellent uh, horse here, Benedetta, um, taking all before it. Again, perfectly weighted here, 53. Gets to sit wherever it wants here, just in behind the pace. There'll be some of that. Um and some of these can't win, and there's a few that have got chances. Star Patrols, I, I've got, it's a horse I do have an opinion of. Um, keen to see how it comes back at this preparation. Um, if there is a danger, I think I think it is it. Cool. And we're going to wrap up with the 1,700-metre uh, benchmark. I just know my handicap again. Yeah, 1,700-metre handicap here. And... I think there's a really solid way to finish the day. It's been a little bit forgotten by the market, and that's Flash Flood. It's $10. What's it done wrong, this prep? It's just been nosed out by Solcom last time out. Before that, it was behind Floating Artist, two Group 1 horses. Uh, before that, was it sits on pace, produces honest efforts every time. You can back it each way and be pretty comfy. Uh, and it's on top uh, from Sabak, who was stuck back to in the quicksand on the inside last time out again, and I'm forgiving that. Uh, a fairer track suits it, and it's over the odds. And, yeah, the two – that I've got to respect the world for Devoted and the other one, but I just think they're safer each way plays. And um, now these other two down the bottom of the field are starting to get up and grade a little bit. But uh, what do you think? Yeah, 
um, good way to finish the day. I'm really keen to see how these two uh, main picks in the market go because uh, I think they, I think they'll fight it out. I, I think flash flood drawn out in 15 um, presents a challenge. Um, and that, that's a little bit of concern for me. And some of these other ones, you know, you've got horses like fifth favourite in this macrum that's gone nine, nine, and nine as its most recent form. Like some of these, they're going to have to produce something. You know, if you can find the winner outside of these, then good luck to you. I've, st I've settled on devoted. Um, I just think there's, there's more natural improvement here. Loved at the win last start, um, sat off the pace and was produced at the right time, finished off nicely. I think the step out now um, to the 1700 is ideal. And gets Blake Shin. I think it's going to be hard to beat Carini. I am interested to see how this goes. It was a good run first up after, you know, it's got some decent form um, in Europe um, over longer distances. So really seeing what... It, Keen to see what it can produce. Maybe they've got something in mind for this. Um, so it's definitely the knockout course, but those two will fight it out. Beautiful. Uh, can you squeeze some value out of a quaddy here today? I'm not sure I can. Um, it's going to be really tricky here. Uh, Mr. Brightside, number one, and Alligator Blood, number two, in the first leg. Uh, in the second leg, I'm going to go number one, Amelia's Jewel, number five, Foxy Frida, and number 11, Torajin. Uh, in the third leg, I'm going to go number five, Star Patrol, number eight, Benedetta, and number 10, Najim Su Suhali. And to finish off the day, I'm going to go number 10, Devoted, number 16, Carini. Cool. It's going to not be great, but you just take the, take the, you know, have 200% on it, have it two times. It's, it's pretty skinny. Um, what do you got? Two, six, uh, 12 and $24. Take cool. it twice for 48. You might, you might get, get something out of it. A few hundred. You might get 10, 500 out of it. Okay. Uh, Optimistic, but you forget a split, maybe. Um, have you got a best yeah, in value? Yeah, yeah. My, my best. I'm, I'm really and gonna, I'm gonna last let week, what, last week, last five favourites one, didn't they? So this smells a little bit the same. So what can go wrong? I'm going I'm to I'm gonna get it rocking and rolling for everyone here. This is this is big, Daggy. I'm going race three, number two, Antino. All on to race five, number 15, Legacies. All on to Mr. Brightside. All on to Amelia's Jewel. We're just finishing there? Yeah, okay. just those four. All right. Well, I'll make my best number. Race nine, number eight, Benedetta. Uh, what about your value? Yeah. Or is that just your bet for the day? That's that's my bet for the day. The value, I did have a, something where I saw a little bit of value, didn't I? Um, race four, number six, I am unstoppable. Cool. You might get five or six bucks that. Let's finish with race 10, number nine, Flash Flood. Uh, and the couple I mentioned somewhere early in the day. Better, yeah, whatever, Flash Flood will do. Let's get to Randwick, because we've been waffling for a bit here. Randwick, we got good and true as well uh, on a 10 race card that is something else, this card. Um, let's kick off with the midway, benchmark 72, the mile. Uh, how are you starting the day here? Yeah, uh, covered this off. I've settled on two, but I'm going to stick with the top weight, Electrica. Um, thought that was a good win last start after some really... It's been in and about the placings against decent horses for some time now. Beat Mon Felicity uh, last start. Jim Mon Felicity's come out and run well since. Um, and then prior to that, ran fourth behind Straight Acer, who won again after that. And then some other nice races um, it's run. Look, gets the inside gate here first of the day, gets the right run here, should be hardest to beat. Main danger, Miss Cooper, number 14. Same, same. Electric on top. I have to stick with it. Going really well. Uh, from Miss Cooper, who was three wide on a rails day at Canterbury, will improve. And Satinus, who had to sit outside lead in that electric race, I think back to 1,600 metres with a better run suits it. Um, main chances in the first. Uh Oakfield Red Gum, if you're looking for a false number, would be next best. The second is a 1,000-metre Class 3 highway. Uh, 
didn't spend a great deal of time on this, but the the three highway horses here, perennial highway horses, look no dangers. Derry Grow, very impressive. Nash has chosen to stick with it. I assume it's going to a Kosciuszko. It's on top from Iron Will and Saliri, Fever. No, I'm sticking with, once again, my girl. Um, really keen to see how this one steps out. Um, resuming here after a four-month break. Its first couple of wins were were very impressive at Scone, then came out in a listed race behind Red Card. Um, pretty much nearly started favourite in that race with Red Card and was only five lengths off them. Um, put out straight after that with assumptions, absolutely walked in in a, in a trial at Scone. Um, I think this might have a bit of ability, mate. Um, cool. Got it on top because some, some of the rest of them are... It just horses. Thought the main danger might be number six, Salir. Yes, yeah, but loses Nash, but um, needs some luck. The third is a benchmark eighty-eight over the mile. Uh, in my notes, read: "Fuck this race, poor shootout." I dead set went and watched shootout replays instead of doing this form. So tell me who's going to win? This is awful. I, this <laughs> race made me sick. I, I was the same. I thought it was an awful race, which led me just back to the to straight Acer. It's just, yeah. it's just winning at the moment. Four starts is prep, three wins. Um, and last start, absolutely brained him in a similar field, if not worse field. Um, looks to get the right run from gate six, going to sit midfield and doesn't have to be, if it produces anywhere near the last run, it wins. So um, it's on top for me. Yeah, from, uh, from the nine and... Um... Logan Street line probably runs third. How boring. What an awful race. Anyway, shootout was a good horse, Beaver. Very good horse. Yeah. Uh, the 14th, 14th, 1400 metre race four is a benchmark 78. And we see another good horse here uh, who trialled up really well for this. And that's Altivo. Uh, only time it's been beaten was beaten a lip. And if you look at it from another angle, it probably won that as well. Uh, I assume it might be what, Metrop bound or something. But uh, finds a nice race to kick off here. Zach Lloyd on top, gets a nice run. Clear on topper. I've said on top many times in that last sentence. From Holy Mans, who resumed in a race it couldn't win, but hit the line pretty well. Went away and had an absolutely brilliant trial. Uh, it's up here for a reason. Next best, Gringotts, who raced, uh, again, got a bit, decided didn't want to race on the fence, on a fence day at Mooney Valley. Hit the line well there. And may be a good horse as well, but I, I think Altivo is definitely that. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, appears to be clearly the best horse in this race, and based on what we've seen, um, good way to start. I think it's preparation. Quite surprised at the price actually, because it's a pretty deep field. Um, with some of these, you know, they'd need to pop up um, out of the out of the ground to to be better than Altivo, and I think it's got bigger fish to fry than this. So uh, clear on top for me as well. The fifth is the Kingston Town Stakes, a group three over 2,000 metres. A bit more competitive, this one. Who do you like here? Yeah, really competitive here. I, I kind of looked at just fine. I went, ooh, I want to find something to beat that here. And I, I went through the form and I, I did all the work. And then I came back and I thought, and I looked at its European form and I went, oh, geez, this, I think this horse might be good. Um, and the way it won first start, um, that was pretty impressive. Um, it was 11 bucks, I think, and, and you said to, to keep an eye on it, and uh, you, were, you were duly right. Um, you know, it's won, won in the UK, it's raced at Ascot, um, and acquitted itself pretty good over 2,400. I think, obviously, the further they go, um, the better it'll be, and so I'm pretty keen that it will run well in this. Agree. It's on top for me as well. Surprised who Mahal didn't pop up in this race, which maybe suggests they think it's good. This one's going to win. Uh, so it's on top. Uh, I think the forgotten horse here is Protagonist, who first up last time in in Australia uh, won well, and then it copped two bog heavy tracks, which it doesn't go on. That was a nice resumption at Hawkesbury. Nice trial since comes to town. It's thirteen bucks. Goes in uh, any exotics you might want to play on the day, and then um, Montefilia next best. Slow out last time out was good home. I think the whole time through Waller would have um, 
had third up 2,000 metres penciled in the in the diary. So from an inside gate, go time for her. Uh, but it's got to chase down a pretty good one, I think. I will just say, actually, the only other one is um, Major Bill's come back in good order. Racing really well, Major Bill. And it's not a horse that I necessarily thought was complete top level, uh, but he's going quite well. The 1,400 metre group to Dali T-Row Stakes is race number six on the card. And I've been calling out for different form to come into this Phillies lineup for the last month or so. We've now got it in Tropical Squall. I'm going to put it on top here. Uh, I know it's going from two, from Kenzo and Canterbury to Randwick, which uh, doesn't always read well, but it is Gay Waterhouse and she's been known to do it. So just going to expect the fact that this form line's right for the picking. Uh, Mumbai Muse is was four time, is now four times the price of the two horses that uh, it crossed the line with in the lead up. So it is at the $4 a place uh, or something there. If we're looking through the lead-up form, then uh, Tiz Invincible looks a bit obvious to me. Uh, we'll sell in front of the other danger and and may win again, but that's boring. So who do you like? Yeah, I was with you. I thought the Waterhouse box stable held the key here. Uh, I think all three of their horses um, are good chances in this, and you can almost back all three and have a good result. Uh, Tropical School, I think you're right. I think it'll come out and from gate 12 and We'll, we'll try and probably cross them. Um, so it just depends a little bit there on how much petrol it's got to use up to do that. If if, if it can conserve some there, it's going to be hard to run past. Um, I'm like you, not so sure on the lead up form. I think Autumn Ballet, forget about last start mm -hmm. um, and go on prior to that. I think it, it's a it's a really good chance. And I wouldn't leave a horse out like Summer Loving around the 20s. Again, as you said, um, it was only less than two lengths behind these horses in the slow going last start. I'm hoping that the firmer track will suit it. And I wouldn't be surprised if it uh, bobs up as well. Look at you. You've come a long way. Tipping a Waterhouse trifecta. I didn't say I said one of them will win. I didn't say <laughs> that all finished first, second, third. Wow. <laughs> Times have changed, eh? Uh all right, the seventh is the feature. I'm which... trying to open up my mind. Good, Dougie. good, good. Because you know what? She trains a lot of winners, as does Adrian. No, He's a very, very smart man. Yeah. Anyway, the seven stakes is uh, up next over the mile, just a, just around a million-dollar race, I assume. So one, to mess with Melbourne, and two, to, so they can charge premium punters tax on everyone. But uh, otherwise, it just exists here. I believe it's a free ticket into the Doncaster. And I went up and down here and I found the favourite, Fangirl. She, that was pretty nice. That was a nice win last time out. Gets a tick for a dry track. If you go back, she doesn't have the best mile record, but if you actually go into that, all of them are on bog heavy tracks. So she gets a dry track. Uh, she gets a nice run from gate 10 in running line. And I think she's going to be hard to beat. Uh, and she did run into a horse called Animo a few times last prep. So... It's her time now. She probably wins this, goes into Doncaster, runs well there, and then gets sold to Yulong for five million bucks or something. So what a life some people lead. Uh, if I'm going to name a danger, let's go with Pericles. Come back in good order. It's the other fresh blood. It's going to camp probably on Zaki's back and gets first crack at it. So a changing of the guard in some ways this race. I did go looking for who Mahal, as I mentioned. I would have preferred it up in distance was my take from that, but it was a nice return. What do you reckon? Um, with Fangirl as well. Um, I think you point out a really good point there. If you go and look at Fangirl's form, um, while it hasn't won over this distance, uh, oh, this this track and distance, it's won one race over this distance. It's had five starts on heavies and hasn't run a drum. Um, and six on soft, and the two that it missed out on those six um, were on soft tracks. So it's never been out of the placings on a good track. Um, so I think that that's a good um, guide here. Um, and it, I think it just looks to be uh, continuing to improve um, with each preparation and each run. So now it gets um, rid of some of the horses that it's had to chase in its past. I think, again, it chases these and wins again. Awesome. The 1,100 metre shorts comes up next, the next stop on the way towards the Everest. Uh, and they've put together a good field. This is probably going to be largely what we're going to get in a few weeks' time. Uh, can you see them turning the table on the winner last time out? 
cracking race, hey? Mm. Um, really like it. I, I can. Um, I just got a massive opinion of uh, In Secret. I think it will probably have benefited more from that first up, that first up run. Um, gets gate four here. I think that's perfect. I, I've got it on top. Uh, remarks a horse I, I do have an opinion of. I also think um, Bunos Nochos mm -hmm. can run really well here. That was uh, very good first up. Um, let down and went really quickly past them and then has had some, you know, not far off them in the new market in which in secret one. Um, again, I think it can run really well and it looks like it's come back really uh, well this preparation. Some of the others that obviously private iron lost and running, I want to see them go around again uh, and what they do before I'd be falling into those similarly Marzu, but uh, definitely those three are for me. Yeah. I took the, the opinion that uh, Remark had to do a lot of work there to stay out of trouble first up, uh, sat wide, and I thought that was a nice win. And I thought In Secret had its back essentially the whole way and couldn't get past it. Uh, I know probably up in distant suits, but I'm thinking maybe it's going to be purely prepped for the, the Everest and maybe this is just one more before we get to the grand final. So I'm going to stick with Remark, again, getting an each-way price from Buenos Noches. That was a proper win, and I think this is a proper horse in a – a sprint race that's ripe for the picking. Some of these old timers at the top I've also dispensed of. Um, so they're the, the main two for me. I'm really interested to see how both Hawaii Five O and Ruthless Dame stack up French uh, fresh uh, because they both produced some good stuff last time out. Uh, form around both of them looks good. And, uh, yeah, I'm just interested to see where they stack up more than anything. But uh, seven, six, and five, the official numbers from me. The Group 3 Bill Ritchie Stakes is race 9, 1,400 metres. And I like a couple of you at a price again. I've got, I'm have got i going to go with Tamerlane on top. It was kept from last week. I like the trials it's come back with. I think it's going to get almost sole lead here as um, the doorbell's ringing for Beaver. And uh, at the $10 price, I'm going to put it on top from Barbie's Fox, who was very impressive last time out. Had no luck, had to get right across heels and still... Rounded them up very well. Uh, 11 bucks looks good with those two for me. I may even save on Redina as well down the bottom, who's also $10. But uh, Kathy on suggests it might be a warm. Yeah, race nine. Interesting affair here, Daggy. Um, I was kind of looking a little bit like you, looking for a bit of value here. I've said on Barbie's Fox. Mm -hmm. um, it's been ultra consistent this time in and uh, finally got the win in the listed uh, Rose Hill last start. I thought that was a good win and a beat Hosier, who I think is going pretty good at the moment. But prior to, prior to that, um, not far behind um, in a couple of round placings behind St. Lawrence at Caulfield and Pacific Ruby at Sandown. That was pretty good. Uh, and seems to come back to Sydney and going well. So I thought it could run a nice little race. Um, so I've got it on top um, as hard as the beat. Obviously, Alencia might have suffered a bit of uh, second up syndrome there, but... Um, Yeah, I think it'll certainly be hard to beat. Just a bit worried about the draw and where it might get to. Um, but Barbie's Fox on top for me. Cool. Uh, you walked away just as I said it, but I agree with you. Um, and a very nice, very nice last time out. We're going to wrap up with a 1,200-metre benchmark 88, and I'm particularly keen, and maybe I've talked myself into this for the wrong reasons or uh, kidding to myself, but there's a $20 winner here, and uh, I'm going to back it. And that's number 16, Atmosphere. A uh, horse I've always had a bit of an opinion of. Has chased some nice ones along the way the last few preps. Um, trialed alongside Tamerlane, who we'll see in the one at the race before, and trialed quite well. He's going to probably lob into the 1-1 spot here. Uh, I'm keen to play with. It's going to be how I finish the day here. Maybe in from the stable mate Sandpaper, who's also trialed up okay. And... Uh, Kibu and Co are also chances here, Vienna Princess. But um, finishing with the blue in the last, go on and tip Gaza Blanca for me. I am. I'm sticking, <laughs> mate. Um, why wouldn't I? Uh, moral beaten first up. Turn the tables uh, second up and one. Beat Peril. I think Peril's a good horse. I think this is a good horse. Uh, drops two and a half kilos on that. I think um, Kate 10 is fine. And I think this just sets up perfectly. Um Open race, plenty of chances at prices, but uh, I'm just banking on this being a progressive type of horse that might be destined for higher grades. So 
uh, in on top for me. Uh, one of the hardest to beat top weight, Kyoto. 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 Um, I think it can run really well. Um, and resuming here, I think if it produced its best um, configure in the finish and seem to trial quite well. Cool. It might be a good day for Gay, actually, with Kibu starting favourite as well. She, uh, maybe you're right, chipping a trifecta earlier there. But uh, at Randwick for the seven stakes day, the quaddy, I'm going to go in the first leg. Number one, think it over. Seven, Hu Yamal. Eight, Pericles and nine, Fangirl. Second leg uh, will be, where are we here? Five in secret, six Bruno's Notches, seven Remark, and eight Ruthless Dame. Third leg, eight Tamerlane, ten Barbie's Fox, eleven Alentia, and sixteen Redina. I just know I thought political debate was going to Newcastle, so it might go in as well. And let's come home with six Kibu, seven Dynamic Impact, sixteen Atmosphere, and twenty Gaza Blanca. Progroupracing.com.au. I'm going to make my best on the card at Randwick. Race 7, number 9, Fangirl. And my value, race 10, number 16, Atmosphere. What are your thoughts? Yeah, my best, race 4, number 1, Altivo. And my value bet, race 9, number 10, Barbie's Fox. Yeah, two exciting cards there. Uh, before I let you get to Queensland, a couple from Adelaide. Uh, race 8, number 4, Anna Jazar. Is was saved from the midweeks to head over there and race nine, number two, hypothetical pops up in Adelaide. I think it'll win there as well. What do you got for us up north? Very good. Yeah, race two, number two, Chernak. Uh, I think it'll make it three straight, going very, very well at the moment. I think race five, number four, Holstein. I think it will continue on its winning ways as well um, at a nice price. Um, and then race seven, number three, Show Me Mercy. I think it's going to be hard to beat as well. Awesome. Uh, don't forget to check out progroupracing.com.au for regular tips, plenty of news and lots going on there. I've got an article up for Newcastle today uh, with the Cameron and the Newcastle Cup on. Spoilers, there's lots of Chris Lee horses involved. Uh, good betting day there. But good luck this weekend, punters. Make sure to tune back in next Tuesday for our Wednesday preview. And uh, good luck this weekend. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.